Introducing tonight's starting lineups. First, for the Scarlet Raptors of Rutgers, Camden. Starting at one guard, 5'5", five, five, freshman from Franklinville, number one, by Kara Johnson Kelly. Also in the line, 5'6", senior from Powell, number three, Gabby Green. of women's basketball. We are leaders and teachers, dreamers and winners. We are professionals who conduct ourselves ethically and with integrity. We place the education, safety and well-being of the athletes we coach above all else and teach them the fundamental values they need to succeed in life. We are coaches united for the good of our game and those who play it. We are the WBC team. are working every day to keep college sports safe so you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy Tonight, SB Gymnasium plays host to a once again another doubleheader in the NJAC season right here on Roan Radio 89.7 at WGLS-FM. First up, it's the Rowan women's basketball team taking on the Rutgers, Camden, Scarlet Raptors. Hello, everybody. Joe Stoffenberg here in SB Gymnasium as you're about to tip off here a crucial conference matchup as we are underway. Profs currently sitting number two in the NJAC standings, trying to get further up, try to, or at least try to stay in that number two spot as they're working things inside. Now throwing it back outside to Olivia Ruan. Three could not go, and a defensive rebound by the Scarlet Raptors as we are underway. For your profs, it's Kennedy Brown, Alexis Criley, Olivia, Olivia Ruan, Kaylin Seitzma, and Ayana Johnson, the starting lineup as a three-pointer made from Fatima Williams. Good, gets the first bucket of the game about 40 seconds in. Akira Johnson, Kelly, Gabby Green, Fatima Williams, Ariel, John, Ariel Robinson, and Shane Holmes 
Rounding out the starting lineup for the Rutgers Camden Scarlet Raptors. They're in the all red jerseys with the red lettering, or excuse me, the white lettering across the chest. That says Rutgers and the black numbers as another bucket goes for Rutgers Camden. The Crofts are in all white with Rowan right across the chest. The brown Rowan with the brown numbers as well. Seitzma on the far wing, give to Rule on the give to inside the Johnson. Johnson had a big game last time against Rutgers Camden. We'll get to that in just a little bit, but does exactly what she's supposed to do, get the offensive rebound. The rebound was, the layup was no good. Another offensive rebound, and that's good as well. Finally, the Profs can hit. Lexus Criley hitting for the first bucket for the Profs. Took a couple of chances for the Profs to finally put it in. They do. Olivia Rulon gets the steal. Gives the ball right back to the Profs. It was right at half court. The Profs are able to set up shop here. Johnson looking around right at the elbow. Swung over to the other elbow to Seitzma. Out to roll on, back to Seitzma on the outside. Inside, outside game, working for the Profs as it's hit from Alexis Criley just inside the three-point line. Two minutes into the opening quarter of basketball. Going inside, Scarlet Raptors no good. An offensive rebound from Fatima Williams. The other layup is trying to put up, but that one is no good as well. Ayanna Johnson was got her first assist of the game last time around. Johnson went back to inside. Now outside again with Alexis Criley. Seitzma looking around on the far wing. Drop off pass to Rulon. Back to Seitzma now. Seven on the shot clock. Ayanna Johnson right at the free throw line. Goes right in. Gets her shot blocked. But it does go out of bounds. And the props will maintain possession. There is three seconds left in the shot clock, so the props are going to need a quick bucket here to avoid the shot clock of violation and miscommunication. And the props sends the ball wayward, out of bounds. As the ball right goes into the hands of Coach Gabby LaSalle in her 19th season here for Rowan. On the other end, net writer. Sixth season for the Scarlet Raptors. Graduated from Wider University from 1983. Once again, this is her sixth season. Started 2012-2013 season. As the shot, no good from the Scarlet Raptors. Goes out of bounds when he touched it off the rebound. Once again, no Grace Marshall tonight. Sitting on the bench is Olivia Rulon. Got her pass blocked. She got it right back as Alexis Criley puts it back. The cross first lead of the game. Criley's got all six points right now for the Profs, showing why she leads the team with field goal percentage. She always takes the high percentage shots as a block from the Profs. Sends the ball wayward, but the Scarlet Raptors get the defense, the defensive rebound, excuse me, the offensive rebound as they keep things alive. Williams goes in, kicks right back out, and the three-pointer swishes for Shane Holmes. Last game, Rutgers Camden beat Wilkes University 90 to 82. As Shane Holmes takes the charge. All right back, Scarlet Raptors way. They have the eight to six lead. So I was saying before the last game, 22 points for Gabby Green, six steals. They had 37 points off of turnovers. This was a season high for the Scarlet Raptors team as a turnover on the near side, stepping out of bounds. It's going the other way, a substitution made. Dominique Peters checking in for Kalen Seitzma. Argachitelli and Jason Joseph will have the second half of this doubleheader. The men's team is will take on the Scarlet Raptors right after this game. Tentative start at 8 p.m. Two points goes in for Dominique Peters. Her first two comes easily in the paint. Green who thought about a three. Excuse me, that's Williams who thought about a three. And a block from Dominique Peters. As it's going to stay here. Dominique Peters using her wingspan to 
Make sure she gets a hand on that one. Made it look easy. Last time that these teams faced, Ayanna Johnson had a career night. 31 points, 24 rebounds. It's too shy of tying the single game record for Rowan. Missed the layup as the Profs will start it up as Rulon. A little bit of miscommunication. Peters threw it basically right in between Rulon and Brown. Brown thought Rulon was going for it. Rulon thought Brown was going for it. Instead of both of them trying to go for it, only one does, or excuse me, none of them do, as the only one thing comes out of this, ball sailing out of bounds. Here are the Scarlet Raptors taking a screen. That was Holmes. Quick give to Green as she's trying to drive in. The pass gets blocked away, but that leaves a wide open Johnson Kelly, and she's unable to make that one at air balls. Mid-ranger no good. Here comes Brown to Peters over to roll on. Long two, and that one nets through. Profs go back to a two-point lead. Might be a back and forth night as the layup is good and an end one. We'll send Johnson Kelly to the line for one. Dominique Peters realizing she was out of position. Might have been a little bit of a frustration foul, excuse me, for Johnson out of position. Jenna Hoffner comes in for Ayanna Johnson, who we've seen all year have a little bit of trouble staying out of the foul game. An early substitution will put Johnson on the bench. Gabby Lassell knows that she's going to have to use her later on in the game when it comes time to try to win it as a turnover by Dominique Peters slipping up on the far wing. Give the raw right back to the Scarlet Raptors around half court. Peters is on Holmes. Holmes takes it in, kicks out to Williams. Williams is going to drive, but a block by the Profs. Gives a two-on-one opportunity. Roll on to Cryley. The bank shot, no good. But a jump ball will push the Scarlet Raptors way. Hoffner, Rulon, Brown, Peters, and Cryley. For the pros for the Scarlet Raptors, still the starting lineup. Johnson, Kelly, Green, Williams, Robinson, and Holmes. Stopping right at the free throw line. They kick out the Holmes. Three-pointer, good. It's a four-point game. Profs did fall down early in the last game against Rutgers and Newark. Came back and won that one 67 to 60 as Brown drives in. Could not get the layup. A missed offensive rebound for Hoffner as they come from behind. Play by Kennedy Brown to put the ball loose. They get it right back. Home stops as she's gonna set up a play, possibly looking for a pick. Gets it from Green, as Green now has it on the far wing. There's a drop off pass, as Holmes gets, Holmes gets it right back. Pass out to Johnson Kelly for three. That one's no good. High pass stolen away by Johnson Kelly. Going one on one with Cryley, and puts it in for two. Just a tremendous play there from Johnson Kelly. To the ability to get around Alexis Cryley, an easy thing to do is we have 2.50 left to go in the first quarter. You got the rule on in the corner for three. That one's no good. Rebound it by Tamara Johnson. Pass to Green, loads up for three. That one no good and rebounded out. Cryley stopping right behind the free throw line or three point line, passes cross court to rule on. They try to get it inside the Peters, but could not. It's quickly taken away, and now here comes Holmes. Holmes stopping at the far wing. Passes are swung all the way over. Now back to Holmes as she loads up for three. That one 
Clanks off rim, rebounded by Peters. As it's quickly taken away, once again, a lot of sloppy turnovers by the process going up for it to Mary Johnson. She got fouled, left no good, but she's gonna go to the line for two. That was on Jenna Hoffner, the first foul. As Byrne will come in, checking in for the first time tonight. Next time also the Rutgers Camden Scarlet Raptors and Profs met. Profs out rebounded 59 to 27. 27 second chance points. That was the highest output for the season so far for this Rowan team. Would love to repeat right now. Going to be tough with only scoring about 10 points right now with two minutes left to go the first quarter. One of two free throws at the line for Tamara Johnson, her first point. The seven point lead by Rutgers Camden. Kennedy Brown slumming things down right near the RU logo on the near side of the court. Rulon the Hoffner at the high point. If to burn, 10 on the shot clock. Get back to Peters to Rulon inside the Hoff. They're fighting for it as she got the ball poked by Gabby Green. What a play there from Green. Give over from Johnson. Kelly over to Williams. Could not control it. The ball went to the profs as it's hit right off, and that goes out of bounds. So it will remain with Rutgers Camden. One and a half left to go in the first quarter. It's almost a similar situation as last week against Rutgers Newark. Being down big, long two no good. Burn over the roll on inside to Peters, spinning around, putting it up, and having to go down for two with about a minute left. The five point lead, 16 12. Scarlet Raptors lead. Williams has it on the near wing. Gonna try to back down. Kennedy Brown trying to get to the paint instead. Kicks out to Johnson Kelly. She drives in with two defenders on her. Byrne and Hawthorne have no shot at that one. Goes down for two. It's a seven point lead. Byrne over to Brown. Williams clapping her hands right in the face of Brown. Brown's gonna spot up for three. That one's no good. Now it's a two on O. Chasing it down. Rulon Brown as Williams puts up the layup and it's no good. An open layup missed by Fatima Williams. We're gonna check in Jessica Beck. Seven on the game clock. Burn, corner three, good! As that's gonna do it for the first quarter. Three-pointer helps, but still down by four is your Rowan Prof team. As 19 to 15 will end the first quarter we're going to take a quick break when we get back. Second quarter action begins right here on Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM. Universities are working every day to keep college sports safe. So you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy. We are the coaches of women's basketball. We are leaders and teachers, dreamers and winners. We are professionals who conduct ourselves ethically and with integrity. We place the education, safety and well-being of the athletes we coach above all else and teach them the fundamental values they need to succeed in life. We are coaches united for the good of our game and those who play it. We are the WBCA. The Scarlet Raptors, Elijah Brown in the WGLS studio taking care of the engineering duties. About to start the second quarter. 
A little bit of NJAC news, though, as you should say, Division Three news, that Raja Bacon coming into the game tonight against NJCU, six points away from 2,000 would make her the 47th player in Division Three history to reach that mark. Right now, I got two points. Need four more for that as the profs take over the ball right at half court. Stealing the profs as a cross court pass to roll on. Peters spotting up for the, that one is good. Heading down, Dominique Peters coming off the bench. Lethal score. The profs cut the deficit now to one. Ultimately, though, you go back to Mariah Bacon. If you think about it, she might get the all-time scoring record as Peters driving in as an easy coast-to-coast -coast steal, putting it in for a two, giving the Prost right back the lead. Crossing half court. Double teamed as Prost almost forced another turnover. Inside the Williams. She's got it double teaming as a foul called on the floor. Jack scoring record at 2,048 points. Raja Bacon getting very close to that mark. It'll be interesting to see how things play out. Record is only held as Fatima Williams drives in. Record currently held by Michelle Jones, played from William Patterson from 1987 to 1991. Longstanding record as Tello, corner three. That one is no good. Rebounded by the Scarlet Raptors. A double team by Byrne and Peters but they get the ball up. Williams just using the speed, getting through. Pass out to Holmes, driving in right on Beck. Good defense. Did foul Holmes as she's gonna go to the line for two. Jessica Beck with her first foul is two minutes, almost two minutes into the second quarter. Scarlet Raptors have the one point lead. As that one misses from Holmes. Holmes on the year. Shooting about 28% from the line. It's almost 64%. Misses the first, gets the second. Quickly on the other end, Diana Johnson, who's back in, got fouled right under the bucket as Byrne will inbound. Byrne, Johnson, Beck, Peters, and Tello. Out for the props. Tello was in the corner, tried to get it inside the Peters. It was a tough play, and it's a forced turnover and a two-point layup good. As the Prost down four. With 7.50 left to go in the second quarter. Tello inside, outside the back now. Thought about a three, but a quickly defend it. Burn. Passing over to Peters, who's at the high point. Kick out to Beck for three. That one is no good. Now it's a two on a one with Beck behind. Peters came, but it didn't matter. Johnson Kelly. But a right end goes right at Jessica Beck. I don't understand why going at Beck would be the best thing to do. It's unfortunate there only you know, going against 5-4 and Jessica Beck or only going against 5-9, Dominique Peters. A three-pointer good. Nicole Byrne, she's got six tonight. On two of two from beyond the arc, a steal by Johnson. Give to Byrne, no good. An offensive rebound, give to Byrne once again, and that one is good. Ayanna Johnson doing what she does best, 
get the boards, give to Byrne, and put it down for two. Second foul there on Beck. She's subbed out. Peters, Tello, and Beck take a seat. Johnson, Brown, Byrne, Seitzma, and Criley in. Rowan down one, 26 to 25. Williams looking around, finding Johnson Kelly. Burn on her. Is Burn staying with her? Holmes inside to Ariel Johnson is her shot got blocked. Here comes Seitzma leading the charge. Gives to Brown on the near wing. Seitzma now over to Burn. Loads up for three again, and that one is good. That's 11 points for Nicole Byrne tonight. Really starting to take over after that three she hit right at the end of the first quarter. Rebound by Seitzma as a steal by Gabby Green. Alexis Crowley didn't see it coming. A rebound from Seitzma. Might give that to Brown though as the ball popped out. Seitzma tipped it away and Brown got it. Seitzma. Feeding Johnson, who's on the inside. Criley looking around. Will go in for the layup. It's no good. Johnson gets a rebound. Johnson gets a rebound. And that one is no good as Johnson's knocked to the ground. A quick takeaway. Burn driving. Getting the foul. And a one. 13 points for Nicole Byrne. Trying to make it 14 here with a great play. Four and one. Burn already getting through her career high. Originally it stood at nine points. And that came against Drew on December 29th of 2018. Gotta change it now. And she's got 14 points tonight. Two for two from beyond the arc as well. Missed layup, here come the Bross once again. 31-26, feed the Cryley. As she's gonna kick out the burn once again, the hot hand for three! Yes! 17 points here in the second quarter. Causes Rutgers Camden to call a timeout. What a play from Nicole Byrne as we will take a step off. You're listening to Roan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM. More second quarter action right after this. Roan Radio 89.7 WGLS FM. Joe Stauffenberg here in Esby Gymnasium. If you're just tuning in, already Nicole Byrne, 17 points, and we're only here in the second quarter. As a shot block from Ayanna Johnson. Get it out of here. Nicole Byrne shooting four for five from beyond the arc, six for seven from the floor, one made free throw. But Byrne has the game lead. A career high, 17 points as Johnson plays some great defense. The ability to get around her for Tima Williams for two points. Brown, Criley, Seitzma, Byrne, and Johnson out there for the profs. Byrne has it in the corner, got trapped, so she kicks it out. Johnson tried to get it inside as Green now trying to get around Brown. A double team forces the pass inside. Another block from Johnson. That's two straight possessions with a block. Showing why nobody should go into the paint when Ayanna Johnson's on the floor. She's gonna take a seat. Three blocks tonight, no points, but eight rebounds. Johnson Kelly. They get some moves around Burn as Burn plays great defense. Seitzma gets the rebound. 
Brown slowing things up to 34 to 28. Lead by the Pros, pick by Seitzma. Criley was open for three. That one bombs away and good. Under four minutes left to go in the second quarter. As Brown got crossed up, Williams goes to the paint, puts it up for two. Not good for Kennedy Brown there. She fell right to the floor. Seitzma, elbow jumper, good. Three and a half left to go in the second quarter. 39-30, ball on the ground as Criley gets her hand around it. Jump ball goes the way of Rutgers Camden. Right at half court, they will inbounds it right in front of the media table. 3.22. Left to go in the second quarter. Gabby Green found Johnson Kelly. And now she's gonna back into the paint on Byrne. Kicks outside the green. Green fires away, that one's no good. Rebound it by Johnson Kelly as a push on Ariel Robinson. Seitzma, it's her second. Taking a look at the NJAC standings, Rutgers Camden, right in the middle of the pack, sitting at five. Young Rutgers Newark, the College of New Jersey, Rowan and Montclair State. Four fouls for the Profs in the second quarter. Holmes trying to drive in. Green almost put Kelly on the floor as Caldwell checked in as she got the steal. Peters, Brown, Caldwell, Byrne, and Criley in. Caldwell spots up for long two, and that one's good right behind the free throw line. It's an 11-point game. Profs have the lead as we, at least I thought that the, the Profs could no way get to the mark of 90 points. The second quarter hits, the buckets are starting to go down. They aren't going for Rutgers Camden as Brown got the rebound, goes coast to coast as Criley, the jumper is no good. But Fatima Williams will get the foul before the shot. The Profs have scored 26 points in the second quarter. Burn with a new career high, 17. He's playing a lot of minutes tonight. Keep it on the hot hand as they look for on that, that inbounds. Instead found Dominique Peters, kicked out the Caldwell for three. That one hits off front iron. Rebounded by Williams as she takes it now. Give to Holmes. Holmes on the far wing. Stops her dribble. Shouldn't have did that as a, she had an open lane there. Give right back to Holmes. She tried, tried to put up a shot. Tries to plead her case saying I got fouled. But there was just a ball hit out of bounds. They're saying it was a clean play to send it out. 13 on the shot clock. Williams inbounding it with under two minutes left to go in the second quarter. Single digit on the shot clock is a long three put up from Johnson Kelly, rims in and out. It's no good, rebounded by Caldwell. Here comes Peters, stops, gives to Brown. Near wing, gives to Caldwell, gives to Byrne, sets the screen. Give back to Byrne for three. No good. Briley almost had the offensive rebound there instead, lets it go to Johnson. Johnson trying to find an open player, could not as the ball's intercepted by Caldwell. Brown had it initially as it's up court pass and could not control it. Williams puts a layup, tries to put it in. Caldwell, the hard foul. Good foul though as Williams did not make it. The taught when you're gonna foul, make sure they don't make the bucket. That's exactly what Caldwell did there. Now Williams has to earn two points at the line. Ross only had one shot at the line. Rutgers Camden had five, only made three. It's the best free throw shooting team in the NJAC right now. 
as Williams nets her first. Green shoots the best out of the team from the, from the charity stripe, 83%. Coming in for the profs, Olivia Rolon. 116 left to go in the second quarter. Missed free throw as Peters gets the rebound. Burn looked up, saw Rolon open, gave it to her, and could not put the layup. The shot was a little bit rushed, and she had to as they had the Scarlet Raptor trying to chase her down. Caldwell got another steal once again. Burn. Stopping right at half court and then give to Criley. Over to Peters, who's at the high point. Throws it up, puts it in for two. 47 seconds left in the second quarter. First half, a lot of threes have gone down for the Profs. Seven of 16 as 10 second violation. Couldn't get it over. And it's a take takeaway. It was right back with the profs. Riley trying to find open player getting across half court. Give to Caldwell. Far wing to roll on. Back to Criley. Elbow at Caldwell. Fade away. Peters. Good. And assist from Caldwell. Williams taking it across once again. So the game high, Byrne with 17. Great block there from Caldwell, but they're gonna say it was on the arm. Tough call to make. Was made with 9.2 left to go in the second quarter. Right behind Byrne, Dominique Peters with 14 points. First free throw up and good for Fatima Williams, the junior guard from Camden, New Jersey. A high school ball at Timber Creek. Second one up and does not go. A little bit of struggles coming from the free throw line here in the second quarter. Five on the game clock. Pass out the burn to end the second quarter. Could not put it up as Peters tried to tip it. Does not count, but that will do it for the second quarter of action. Rowan women's basketball as they have the 46 to 32 lead over the Scarlet Raptors. A lot of interesting numbers for this props team. Both teams took 35 shots in that first half, but Rowan making 19 of them. Rutgers Camden only making 12. You also have to look at the three pointers. Took eight more three pointers and made four more of them. Uh, this team right We are the coaches of women's basketball. We are leaders and teachers, dreamers and winners. We are professionals who conduct ourselves ethically and with integrity. We place the education, safety, and well-being of the athletes we coach above all else and teach them the fundamental values they need to succeed in life. We are coaches united for the good of our game and those who play it. We are the WBCA. Enable me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. Say it to my face. Hey. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a center. Shortstop. High jumper. jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. Don't you worry, my child. Everything's gonna be just fine. sports, our universities are working every day to keep college sports safe, so you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color.
love your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Hello, I'm Dan Gilmore, Director of Athletics at Rowan University. The primary goal of our department is to develop you, the student athlete, in all aspects of life. Rowan Athletics is committed to your success on the field, in the classroom, and as citizens of high moral character and service. Our mission defines the commitment. We exist to purposely foster a selfless environment that cultivates community, embraces learning, and enhances excellence in sport and life. I am a prof. We are dedicated to the pursuit of excellence and committed to helping others achieve their fullest potential. As scholars, athletes, leaders, and members of society, our department and the members within are devoted to enhancing opportunities for success and competitive greatness. I am a prop. We are committed to developing a spirit of unity and belonging in the athletic department for those we serve. We encourage diversity and inclusion. And create identity by bringing together members of our campus, alumni, and local communities through athletics and service. I am a prof. We hold ourselves to the highest standards of integrity. Through actions of respect, honesty, and fair play. We strive to behave ethically towards others. And convey expectations of high moral character. We are committed to each other and respect the differences in others. Our individual successes strengthen the whole. And we support one another in our endeavors as we each share a common goal. I am a prof. Education is the forefront of our existence. We develop a culture where lifelong learning is a priority. We support each other and our student athletes in the quest for self-improvement and academic success. To uphold the mission, Rowan Athletics Department will use its core values as guidance in actions both on and off the field. When you're in college, you kind of find out who you are. And throughout your four years, you develop yourself with all the different experiences, which leads into dedicating yourself to your community, to your family. So when you're a senior, you're coming out a well-rounded person. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests outside of the classroom and outside of the court or field. I've had the ability to get into different activities and organizations, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. Getting to be involved in a lot of different things, ranging from obviously being a student athlete to getting involved with my campus and my community, and not only being allowed to do that, but being encouraged to do that. The opportunity to be, to be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, to have the professors know me on a personal level, all of those things came together uh, very nicely in one package in Division Three. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. It really helps you develop thinking from other people's perspectives and looking at problems from outside the box. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. I've definitely learned how to really be myself. I found out, yes, I am actually a good leader, and yes, I can actually put myself forward because I am good enough. I can do it. Coming in to college, I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of different career goals and I've learned so much about myself that I was always like growing and changing. When I got to college, it forced me to step up and become more of a leader. And I think that was something I had the capability of doing and forever grateful that being at a Division III school gave me that opportunity. You have to dedicate your time in the classroom. You have to dedicate your time in the gym, on the field, on the court. Our coaches and all the entirety of the athletic department, they valued 
the student athlete going out to community and trying something new and getting involved in campus life. You can get involved in so many different things. Um, so the possibilities are truly limitless for what you can do with your college experience. You can kind of make it your own in the Division III setting. So I would encourage people who want to have flexibility to pursue different interests and passions to go D3. At Rowan University, we are committed to a healthy, safe, and supportive community. It's on us to create an environment where everyone feels and is safe. To create an environment in which sexual assault is unacceptable. Sexual violence is more than just a crime against individuals. It threatens our families. It threatens our communities. It's on us to do something about it. To hold our friends accountable for their actions. To stop being a bystander to the problem of sexual assault. When we see something wrong, we should not look the other way. One in four women, one in 16 men, will experience some form of sexual assault during their college career. It's on us to look out for one another. To recognize that sex isn't sex unless you have consent. To get a friend home safe. Less than 5% of rapes are reported to law enforcement. It's on us to support survivors of sexual violence. And to never blame them. To start the conversations that are difficult to take reports of sexual assault seriously. It's on us to promote a culture of respect. To treat women with respect. To treat men with respect. It's on us, all of us, to stop sexual assault.
Bigsby Gymnasium as the Rowan women's basketball team as a 46 to 32 lead over Rutgers Camden as we are taking a look at some halftime stats. You have to mention the night that Nicole Byrne is having 17 points, four for seven from beyond the arc, six for nine from the field. Coming off the bench, scorching hot, 17 points, has the game high right behind her is Dominique Peters, also coming off the bench. She's also six for six from the field and two for two from beyond the arc. Also has a total of three rebounds, few turnovers, but has gotten it done on the offensive side. A couple assists and a block as well to start. The second half, the starting lineup out there for the process. They try to give it inside the Johnson. Looked like she got held. But ball will go the other way. For the Profs, Brown, Rulon, Kryley Johnson, and Seitzma for the Scarlet Raptors. It's Johnson, Kelly, Williams, Holmes, Robinson, and Green. Brown on the far wing. Looking around, finds sights on the near wing. Props going now from right to left. As now 10 on the shot clock. Brown to sights on a roll on. Mid range jumper, airballed from. It was an airball from Brown. Roll on put up the last second three as time was expiring on the shot clock. Instead, it's going to be a. There's actually a shot clock violation. Cross couldn't get the shot to go. Nine minutes left to go in the third quarter. Williams has it on the near wing. Gives to Johnson Kelly. Thought about giving going inside. Instead, now back to Williams, to Robinson. That one's no good. The ball tipped off of Johnson's fingertips as she falls to the ground. But they're saying that. There's a last touch right after the fingertips of Johnson from a Scarlet Raptor. And Prost will take over. Kryley gets fouled, pushed down. Prost will keep possession. That'll be the first foul of the second half of the third quarter, I should say. Still nobody has scored here in the third quarter. It's still 46 to 32. Take a look at the second quarter for the process. They really caught fire, 31 points. You flip that around, that's only how many points that the props gave up, only 13 points given up. Outside the Cryley, foot on the line. No good, an offensive rebound by Johnson. Another offensive rebound by Brown. Roll on, mid-ranger, that one rolls around and in. Couple of offensive opportunities for the props. All starts with Ayanna Johnson. A couple of times trying to put it up, unable, but finally it goes as a foul will be called. Maybe that's gonna be on Johnson. The end one for Johnson Kelly as Byrne will check in for the first time in the second half. You'd have had to have think that she's gonna be that role player in the, the second half. The, First one off the bench. She is as Cryley takes a seat. Johnson Kelly's and one does not go. It's a 14 point lead for the profs. Brown. Over to Burn. Brown spotting up. Three pointer no good. Johnson believe got the rebound, but it was poked free. It goes out of bounds. Cryley over the athletic training staff. As Rulon takes a three, that one's no good. Another offensive rebound by Johnson. Be interesting to see what they call this one as it looked like she wanted to put it up, but also kick it out to Seitzma. I'm gonna say that was, the, it was on the pass. So the process will get another opportunity. Reset the shot clock as they get it in the Brown. Brown driving, kicking out the roll on. Open three. That one is good. 
So holds the record for most three-pointers hit in a single game. Came against these Scarlet Raptors last year when it was at Rutgers Camden. Outside the Williams, Williams trying to cross up Brown. Does a great job playing defense. Holmes, thought about a three. Seitzma came out as the ball's poked free. Last touch by Rowan. Gabby Green will inbound it right on the R of the Rowan on the baseline. As inside the Holmes, Johnson with the offensive rebound. Johnson Kelly, good. Byrne got it up to Brown. Brown's on the far wing. They almost had a steal there. They give it inside to Johnson. As I'm going to say, Johnson reached in. Johnson's been in almost every single play for this props team as she is subbed out. Just being, just being inside, it looks like the props are just trying to feed her and trying to put it up, I mean, on the offensive rebound side. She's been there today. Kick the green for three. An open three, a rare miss coming from Gabby Green. And on the offensive side, Ayanna Johnson, six offensive rebounds. Seitzma to roll on, roll on in the corner. Give to Seitzma inside now to Hoffner. A double teamer, an open burn for three. That one is good. 20 points. What a kick there to burn. On the other end, Williams driving last. Touched by Hoffner, but it's the time. Goes to Green, floater no good. Seitzma with the rebound, needs some help. Gets it over to Byrne, back to Seitzma as they have a home run pass to Kennedy Brown, spinning around, getting the, does not get the layup, but does get fouled. Tremendous play if Brown was able to sink that one. Could not get the friendly roll. But the aggressiveness from Kennedy Brown Shows right there, goes in line for two. We saw a lot of Kennedy Brown. Last game is her first one hits. Playing back at the matchup against Rutgers, Newark, Kennedy Brown, eight points, four rebounds, an assist and two steals. Might not be the flashiest of numbers, but she did it all for the props. Got eight chances at the line, sank six of them. 20 point lead for the Profs. Great defense by Hoffner. Keeping Holmes out. They're saying that Holmes stepped out. Hoffner did a great job of not fouling. Went right over. Put her hands up. Made sure that she was able to get the pass out. Would have banked right off of her hands and went out of bounds. Approaching five and a half left to go in the third quarter. Brown. An inbounds pass to her. Burn, Brown, Seitzma, Hoffner, and roll on out in the court. As Seitzma gives it inside to Hoffner. Could not get an offensive rebound by Seitzma. Goes right back up with it. A lot more opportunities after getting an offensive rebound, going immediately back up with it. As Seitzman now is the first free throw. As a substitution will be made for the profs. Dominique Peters will come in for Hoffner. Hoffner getting a little confused there. Coach Sal stops. Hoffner before going to the bench to talk to her. Sites at the one, trying to make it two for two this trip. And does. Easy money at the line. Fifty-eight to thirty-six. Five twenty left to go in the third quarter. Great defense by Byrne as Byrne got a hand in there. 
to foul. The ball was poked free right near the scorer's table. Green inbounding, trying to find Holmes. Got it in right before the five second violation out of bounds. As Holmes will take Byrne one on one, pass out to Green. Back to Holmes, Byrne still on her. Johnson Kelly working on Brown. Brown playing great defense, but slicing and dicing through the paint. Johnson Kelly. Brown at the far wing. Fake pass to Seitzman, out to Byrne, back to Brown. Now Seitzman over to Roland, working around the three-point arc. Said this time going in with Seitzma, out to Roland, pass to Brown, as she drives in, layup could not go. Thought she got some contact. Going the other way is Holmes, kick the green. Back to Holmes. Spot up three from Johnson, that one's good. Catch and shoot. 4.15 left to go in the third quarter. Seitzma gives the rule on to the near wing. Still working that three-point arc. Inside the Seitzma, that's too easy as she got fouled. <laughs> Teammates come over, try to help her pick, pick her up. Seitzma will go to the line, count the bucket. Big improvement at the free throw line. Only had one attempted free throw and one made free throw. By the end of that first half, Cross are six for six. As Hardy, at least for this quarter, any more fouls going to the line. As they're over the limit. The Scarlet Raptors. Holmes, floater, no good. Rebounded by Peters. Half court pass to Burn and half court pass to Brown, but intercept it. I don't like the way that they tried to get the offense going. Behind the back, steal attempt. Poked free, but gotten by Holmes as she set up shop at the point. Johns Kelly to Green, back to Holmes. Inside, turn around, layup, no good. That came from Robinson. Outside the rule on for three. That one is good. Swishing right through Olivia Ruan. 23 point lead. Holmes having some trouble getting it across. Tries to split the defense. Not a very good play there. Quickly stolen by Brown. She put up a layup, no good. Ruan, a under the basket layup. Tried for it. It was an attempt. And on the other end, a foul, a layup, and a trip to the free throw line for Gabby Green. Green leads the team and the end jack in free throw percentage at 83%. We'll try to make it a 20 point lead with a bucket here, or try to cut into the deficit. We'll go back to 20 there. Green, Holmes, Johnson, Kelly. Robinson and Johnson for the Scarlet Raptors. Criley, Peters, Burns, Seitzma, and Rulon for Rowan. Three-pointer banked uh, in and out from Peters. A great shot there. As little drop-off past the green. Elbow jumper good. Burn to Criley. Criley driving the paint. Give to Peters. And one! Floater good to send Peters back to the line. The ability to get around the defenders. Big wings. Dominique Peters. Able to get to the line for a free throw attempt. But that one is no good. The first miss of the game for the profs. 
Now six out of seven attempts. Floater airballed from Johnson Kelly. Peters couldn't get the rebound, poked around. But it was a foul on Peters. That's her third. Now also now put Rowan or the Scarlet Raptors into the bonus. Johnson Kelly back to the free throw line and clanks off of front iron. She's got 17 points tonight. One for three at the free throw line. 0 for four from beyond the arc. She's taken 17 shots, only making eight of them. Still though over, actually just under 50% from the field. Inside the Peters, a pass there. Almost taken away by Green, but Peters grabs it right back. Inside the Tobin, layup rolls around and in. It was sitting right there on the iron. Takes a little bit of an Esby bounce. Goes right in. Over to Holmes, thought about a three. Instead kicks to the corner. Johnson Kelly now going right in. Bucket no good, got the offensive rebound. Bucket no good as well. Right, once again, they do get an offensive rebound. Shot clock reset to 30. A three-pointer from Johnson Kelly, no good. Another offensive rebound as the kickball violation. As Peters falls to the floor, taking some time getting up. As Jaslyn Duverglass checks in, Dominique Peters will hobble over to the bench. Not too sure what happened right at the end of the play there. Would have been a, a hamstring or something. She will go to the athletic training table at the end of the bench. Turn around, jumper from Robinson, no good, but another offensive rebound. Tamara Johnson, now to Williams. Williams gonna drive on Criley, layup no good. Another offensive rebound. Gabby Green for three. That one finally goes. There are a few opportunities. Ross couldn't get a defensive rebound. They go the other way. Can't have many possessions like that anymore. Just giving them another chance to put it in for more points. Seitzma to Tobin. Thought about three. Swinging the ball around and drop off pass to Criley. Good screen set. Driving the baseline is Criley as they're saying that she stepped out. Oh no, they're going to say it's a foul before, before anything else. Two shots at the line for Alexis Criley. As a whole, the team is ninth best in the NJAC, and when you say ninth best, it's just a, a, a pretty word for saying second to last. As Criley misses the first free throw. She also though, does lead the team in free throw percentage at 71 and a half percent. Eighth best in the NJAC individually. Criley one for two at the line. Back to a 20 point lead. As we have 35 seconds left to go here in this third quarter. Listen to our own radio at 9.7 WGLS FM Glassboro. Joe Stoffenberg here, Nesby Gymnasium, Elijah Brown back in the WGLS studio. 23 seconds now. Long three put up from Green. That one's no good. Duver Glass tried to get the rebound, tipped off of her hand. It might have been the only play there because another offensive rebound. Would have been gotten. Mario Robinson. Inside, Criley saves it. Gives the profs the last possession. Criley driving in. It's a three on two. A powerful pass to Duverglass gets intercepted. Five on the game clock. Here comes Williams driving, getting a foul. No bucket, but Williams will go to the line for two. And that bucket would have been. Clutch if somebody on Rowan could have made it. 
I don't know about that look too with Riley at about nine on the, the game clock. Elects to take the shot. Or eventually the offense does. I feel like you gotta slow it up at that point. Williams gets one for two at the line there. Two seconds left. Tobin gives it to Dugan Glass. Thought about a half court heave. Could not get it done. Profs up 69 to 50 as we head into the full final quarter of play. And Rowan trying to defend home court against these Scarlet Raptors. You are listening to Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS FM. After the break, we'll be right back for a fourth quarter action. One and back. Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS FM. Joe Stoffenberg here in Esby Gymnasium. Lodge Brown in our WGLS studio. He's got post game report in just a little bit. We still got the whole entire fourth quarter to play here in Glassboro, New Jersey tonight. Profs beat the Scarlet Raptors last time out. It was the first NJAC game of the year. Back in the back in late November, three pointer no good. Rebounded by Rowan. Pass up to Brown. It's a two on two. Brown attacking the paint and putting it in. What a way to get around the defense. Twenty one point lead. Rowan's largest lead was twenty three. Green. The pass to her sails out of bounds after a tip. Goes right into the empty bench of Rutgers Camden. A total of five bench players for the Scarlet Raptors as Williams goes to the bench. Robinson, Holmes, Green, Johnson, Kelly, and Tamara Johnson out for the Scarlet Raptors. An offensive rebound for Johnson as she was fouled. Tobin, Peters, Rulon, Johnson, and Brown out there for Rowan. Tobin will inbound. I look for somebody as the pass out to Brown, intercepted by Green. Drop off pass to Holmes, still not across half court. Finally crossed it right at the Profs logo. Inside, Johnson Kelly tried to put up a shot. I don't even think she would have made it up just because of a, of a bad angle. But still though, Tobin will earn her first foul. Give out to Robinson, now right back at the point is Holmes. Over to Johnson Kelly at the far wing. Back to Holmes at the point as she's gonna drive right on Tobin. Great defense as the rebound is taken away and Johnson has it. Another rebound for Johnson as her total just continues to pile up. Brown got fouled by Johnson Kelly. Marveling at more rebounding from Johnson. No points. And just as I say that, they throw it inside, get two points. Fiona Johnson 
off an offensive rebound. She's got more than half of the offensive rebounds tonight for this props team. Total of 14. On the defensive side though, 28 as a team. As the Scarlet Raptors will inbound it right in front of the end of the media table, the right end of it. 8.13 left to go in the fourth quarter as Johnson Kelly almost lost possession of it, lost play of it. Green, a drop-off pass as she goes up. Roll on with the block. She shakes her head no. Green looking on like, I can't believe that just happened. Great defense though from Rulon as the ball's clapped by Green. Fade away, jumper, no good. An offensive rebound, but Rulon gets her hands into it. It's gonna be a jump ball. She's skipping away. They stepped on the foot of Rulon. We'll go crossways, Dominique Peters inbounding it. Rulon, drop off pass back to Peters as a give back to Rulon. Cross half court with 25 seconds on the shot clock. Great pick from Johnson. They try to get it inside. They finally do. Johnson put up the shot. Tried to. Got fouled. They go to the line for two. Almost 30 rebounds. 30 defensive rebounds. As Johnson will shoot two. Profs now once again at the large at their largest lead. Nicole Byrne checks in. Byrne 20 points tonight, seven for ten. Five from eight from beyond the arc. It's good for 62 and a half percent. Johnson goes 0 for 2 at the line. Byrne calling for some help. Tobin fouls. Holmes will go to the line for two. A marvel at the last game, too, for Rutgers Camden. Having three players as 20 point scorers Gabby Green, Shane Holmes, and Fatima Williams. Shane Holmes is first. Free throw up and good. A couple of scores around the end, Jack. There's Newark, 28. Ramapo, 20. Kane, 24 points. And NJCU, only 15. And just starting the fourth quarter, William Patterson with the lead over Montclair State. Get an offensive rebound there. One for two at the line, but instead, Shane Holmes with two points, getting her right back to a 20 point lead for Rutgers, or excuse me, for Rowan. Ball sails out of bounds after a tip from Johnson. <laughs> 20 point lead, Peters inbounding it, gives it to Brown. Still 30 on the shot clock. Barrett's barely moved as Brown gets it across. Brown being double teamed, and eventually a foul will be called. Gabby Green with the foul. 14 rebounds for Ayanna Johnson tonight. Three assists, three blocks. Riley gives to Brown. Again, just getting it in before a turnover. Peters, fadeaway jumper, no good. And as here comes Holmes. Over to Johnson and wide open Johnson Kelly. No good, rebounded on the outside by Peters. Almost gets it taken away. Give to Criley. 
inside the Johnson. Nobody's home. Instead, throws it right to Burn for three. That one's no good. Great job there by Anna Johnson making that extra pass as too much heat on that one. Sails the ball right out of bounds. Byrne couldn't drain that open look. And made it back to a 23-point lead. Still, though, the profs able to score 73 points. Rutgers Camden gives up the most points in the end jack to opposing teams at averaging 69.1. That's six minutes left to go in this fourth quarter. Burn back to Brown. Great defense coming from Johnson Kelly. The elbow went down, fouled Brown. I'll be the fifth foul. We'll put the props right into the bonus. And now, now's the time you got to start nailing three free throws. First one up and no good. Brown now two for three at the line. Doesn't help there as it goes two for four with that miss. Rebounded by Rutgers Camden as they are bringing it up. Johnson Kelly going from coast to coast all the way through as they call a jump ball and staying with the Scarlet Raptors. Five forty-seven. The fourth quarter left remaining. Johnson on Johnson. The offensive rebound, no. Taken away by Criley. Right about the free throw line, took that rebound. Brown goes to the corner. Got fouled. Unless they are saying there was an out of bounds play. It must have been because it's now going to be inbounded by Criley to Byrne. Byrne almost lost it and gave it back to Brown. Turning around, Johnson, who had it, screen set. As Gabby Green, with her fourth, will send Ayanna Johnson to the free throw line. Two referees talking it over, making sure that they have the right call, the right decision. We have one free throw attempt in the first quarter, or in the first half. Profs have gotten to the line 13 times. We're going, had 13 attempts, making 14 attempts. Now here in the second, 5.15 left to go in the fourth quarter. A trap in the near corner. There's an open Scarlet Raptor. Johnson couldn't control the Rebound, and now she finally does. Five minutes left to go. Halfway through this last quarter of play. Seitzma over to Byrne. Byrne thought about a three. Instead gives the inside. A bit too much heat on that pass. Inside to Johnson. And everybody Holmes to Green. Inside. Johnson almost got the block, but a fake by Tamara Johnson. Got Ayanna Johnson up and out of bounds and out of the way for an easy two points. Brown, a Johnson screen set. They're going to call a moving screen. And that's her fourth as well. 
Hoffner comes in for Ayanna Johnson as Roland comes in for Byrne. Roland's shooting 41%. Beyond the arc, 10 for 24. All that really comes from the, a lot of it comes from the first half. Only taken five shots. Beyond the arc made three shots from beyond the arc since that first half. 74-55. As a takeaway by the profs, Seitzma has it. They're gonna call a jump ball and the profs will take over. Cryley will inbound as a lineup formation. As a foul on Holmes. She has her hands up like she didn't do anything, but might have been a little push somewhere in that line. That's something that you want to see run. But also, too, something like that could happen to where somebody could be fouled as Brown will shoot two. Roll on the Browns left. Cryley to Browns left roll on to the right. Back to a 20 point lead for the props. Props can hold on to this. This would be a dominating win. Not with points scored, but the points held. Rutgers Camden team, number one team with scoring in the end jack. Profs number two scoring team in the end jack. Doesn't help that they had that 40 point loss, only scoring 38 points against Tufts. It was at that time the number four ranked team in the nation. Seitzma gives the rule on. Back to Seitzma, the top key. Out of the point, actually. Back to Brown. To Seitzma, back to rule on on the near wing. Hoffner on the outside, gives to Cryley. 10 on the shot clock. Cryley kicking out to Seitzma. Inside the Hoffner pass behind her, but it was blocked for her right in front of her. An offensive rebound by Cryley. Shot was blocked as ball still rolling loose as Johnson Kelly finally. Got control of it. Hoffner got her hand in the way. Tried to poke it free, could not. Both teams in the bonus. A 20 point lead. Won't really need to see a lot of key bench players with. Peters out. We saw her leave a little bit in the third quarter as hobbling off. As Johnson Kelly goes to the line and makes two of two. Rule on near side. Across to midcourt. Brown getting double teamed. Somebody's open. And it's rule on in the corner. They finally swing it to her for three. That one's no good. Gabby Green with the rebound. It's a three on one now. Seitzma, there's nothing that she could have done about that one. But they missed the layup as Johnson Kelly got the rebound, gave it back to Green as they tried to save it in. They tried to throw it off of Seitzma, could not. There goes. goes out of bounds from one side of the corner to the other. Cryley will inbound. They'll set up the line like this. Seitz, Mahoffner, Rulon, and Brown. Rulon will take a beeline to the bucket. Take a screen for Brown as Brown has it. He gets it up court. Hoffner at the elbow to Seitz, to Brown. As Brown will call for a play in the far corner. Over to Cryley. 
Hoffner inside the Brown. A lot of power on that pass. An offensive rebound, no good. Another offensive rebound, Cryley through. Puts it up and under. 2.15 left to go in the last quarter of play. A defensive play there from Brown to poke the ball loose. Holmes goes diving for it. Gets on the floor as a jump ball. They give the Scarlet Raptors the ball right back. Green will inbound it right around midcourt. Miscommunication there, who is that who's gonna start the play with the referees. Finally get it sorted out. 14 on the shot clock. As Criley with a crucial steal. Pass up ahead to Beck. Layup no good. Caldwell's right there to clean it up. The Red Mark Zumoff would say turn garbage in the gold. And puts the profs up by 22. A foul. We'll send Holmes to the line. Speaking of Mark Zumoff, 25 years is in the business for the Sixers play-by-play, -play, man. My opinion, best in the business. First free throw up and good. 25 years now being paired up with Ala Abdinabi. Yesterday I got to ring the bell before the game. Holmes gets one for two at the line, sinks the second one. Home run past Jessica Beck. Nobody around as a pass inside the Duverglass. Shot put up and that one's no good. A little bit of rush there and you had to though. The defense was coming. Johnson Kelly with a minute and a half left in the fourth quarter. Spots up along two. That one's no good. A, a rebound there from Duverglass. Caldwell, Beck, Duverglass, Tello, and Tobin. All bench out there. Over to Tello. As Tello drives in, gets the foul call. Bucket doesn't go. I will go to the line for two. Right now, 42 points off the bench for Rowan. Make it more here with a couple of free throws from Samantha Tello. Burn with 20. Peters with 16. I mean, right there says it all when it comes to the bench. Caldwell, four points. Tobin two points, Tello two points. There's Tello working on Holmes. Playing defense as the layup rims in for Brianna Staus. Freshman from Egg Harbor Township. First checking in, finally gets through as Beck crosses up Johnson to get her some space. Tello for three, that one could not bounce in. Great right, defense from Tobin to keep the ball in backcourt. Cross eventually get back, 35 seconds left on the game clock. 21 on the shot as no shot on Holmes. Shot was came from the floor, the, the foul came from the floor. Holmes will shoot two. Profs will move to 10 and seven, finally get on the double digits when it comes to record. More importantly though, the eight and two record and the end jack. Second free throw, good, 81-62, 19 point lead 
for the profs as the Scarlet Raptors still playing some defense inside the Duver glass as it was knocked out of bounds, but they said the last touch though was out on the profs. Meanwhile, 10 and seven for the Scarlet Raptors as they have an even five and five in the NJAC schedule. Staus looking, trying to find somebody on the baseline. That's she said that was double dribble. She knew exactly what she did there. She stopped, clapped her hands, realized. Caldwell in the Tello. Tello's gonna cross half court. Unlikely, Prosser just gonna dribble out the clock here. As Tello got the ball stolen away, Holmes puts up last second shot. Does not go. Score 81 to 62. Profs have the big victory tonight here in Esby Gymnasium. Don't forget men, the men's action coming up right here on Roan Radio 89.7 WGLS FM. As, as always, we will have a post game interview with head coach Gabby LaSalle, but to lead things, coming off the bench and being the leading scorer tonight for the Profs. Nicole Byrne, 20 points, a rebound, a couple of assists, and three steals. Also had to look at the great game from Ayanna Johnson, 15 points, only three points, 15 boards, only three points. But we are now being.